I'm just making my first coffee. <laughs> I know it's already uh, quite late. Um, it wasn't always that. That was before I quit my job as a corporate manager. <laughs> Today I work from home and I can start whenever I want. You know what? As long as the coffee machine is running, I'll tell you my story. Just a moment. So, much better here. Let's start with a story. 20 years ago, I started working as a manager in a large company. It was a well-paid job and, and I really enjoyed it. My goal was to, to, to build up a service division from scratch. That was a challenge, but top management gave me the resources to hire the right people and to build service teams all over the world. In that time, I learned a lot about how to manage people. And I really enjoyed leading and working with my team. My team connected with me, with my strategy and with my service division. They also had great ideas, so we got more and more business. Our division was profitable. After a few years, my team grew up to 350 service employees worldwide. And in that time, I traveled a lot in order to support my team. I liked traveling and I love it today as well. But especially, I loved working with my team. The problem was something else. You see, I got more and more frustrated. Frustrated by strange decisions of my superiors. And I was frustrated with bureaucracy. You know, these typical corporate rules, uh, hidden agendas and political games. Ugh, I hated it. Decisions I needed from top management, uh, they took longer and longer. It was tenacious. And then top management shifted focus. They changed the company strategy. In their new strategy, services were not that important any longer. And of course, I was not convinced that this was the right decision. It was just wrong, in my opinion. And I didn't hold back to talk and complain about this mistake. I was, I was annoyed. Uh, I remember that I even told the board that I not just don't agree, but that I think this is a totally stupid decision. Yep, <laughs> I was not very diplomatic. First lesson here, if you bluntly tell some board members what you think about their stupid decision, yeah, that can feel very good, but it only lasts shortly. From a long-term perspective, it's not a good idea to behave like that. Don't do it. Just, just don't do it. You cannot convince someone by making him an idiot. Also, I was sure some of these board members, well, let's stop here. Let's put it like this. I got more and more into conflict with some board members. I spent more time on company politics than on growing our service business. And that's why I became frustrated and sometimes even grumpy. I had regular one-on-one -on -one meetings with my direct reports. In one of these one-on-ones, my operations manager told me, Bernd, it seems you lost your vision as a leader. And that really hit me hard. It hurt. And it hurt because I was proud of my team and I was proud to lead this team. And now, now I got the feedback from one of my valued team members that I lost my vision. And that was difficult to swallow. Fortunately, in that time, human resources offered me to work with a business coach. It seemed that top management still wanted me to stay in the company. Working with this business coach helped me to better understand my role as a manager. He made it clear that decisions taken by top management weren't my responsibility. In my role, it was expected that I either expected or that I have to quit and to leave the company. But I couldn't accept the strategy change because it would have a negative impact on the services my team and me built up over the years. So I thought I need to leave. That's why I applied for manager jobs all around Germany in other companies. And I got some exciting and even higher paid job offers. And to be honest, my existing salary was already quite high, but I didn't took any of the job offers. Why? I remember one situation vividly. I applied for an interesting new job 
and I got invited for an interview with the CEO. When I arrived at the building of this company, I just looked around. It was a nice office complex similar to the one where my office was. And in this moment, it struck me. Even if I changed my job, and even if I started somewhere else as an employed manager, it would still be the same. After some time, it would become the same corporate rat race. Someone would take a decision I can't accept, and then I would be in the same situation. And in that moment, I felt that this isn't what I want. The problem was that I didn't fit into corporate systems any longer. It still took some months for me to take the decision and to quit my job. I mean, it was hard for me to quit my job because I quit working with a team I led over nine years. And of course, it's also not easy to become self-employed and to start your own business. But it's worse to stay in a job you don't like and which makes you miserable. Dave Ramsey is spot on. When your spirit leaves, take your body with it. You have to live by your values. And I learned that my most important values are freedom and self-determination. And that's why I started my own business. Corporate job is not bad. It was good for me for a certain time, but it wasn't the right job for me any longer. Today, I work as a leadership and business coach, helping others to become the leader they always wanted to be. In that job, I can finally live my values and live them on my own schedule and on my own terms. And it's exactly what I want to do. Guys, I think my coffee is done right now. So let's have a coffee. Okay, time to go to work. See you next time.